Item on the agenda this evening is uh, BA 2015-04. Matt, if you'll please present. Yes, sir. Um, the second item is a little more complex than the first one. Um, we did Same. cover this in pretty good detail at the work session. This is a planned development request uh, by Rhodes Family Properties. This is for one acre of land in the Berkeley <coughs> North neighborhood. It is near the northeast corner of East Berkeley Place and Slater Street, uh, sort of in the southern end of that neighborhood. Um, as you see on the map, it's all zoned R10 around there. Conference plan established this is uh, what we call established residential, which means residential land uses of any type of density, any type of residential zoning is allowed. Um, and then the aerial, of course, you see the, the housing pattern of the properties already built out, um, and a lot of trees for the old urban forest in the neighborhood. Um, this is a plan development request, which is not the rezone. The R10 zoning would remain. Now, this would be an extra approval over and above the R10 zoning district, um, sort of like a floating conditional use. Uh, we've had planned development requests um, cage length over the years. Not very often do we get them. Um, and even in the world of planned developments, this one is not the typical. This is a planned development proposal to address existing non-conforming uses and existing non-conforming development pattern. Um, there is no new development proposed with this. Um, it's simply the applicants wanting to basically fix a mess that's geographic in nature. Um, zooming into the site plan, and you've got some copies in your packet, things that I passed out tonight. Um, there's a revision of the first couple pages of the staff report, and then some larger copies of the site plan, and also a copy of the existing survey. That was one of the things you requested from your work session. So the smaller sheet of paper which has existing survey, <coughs> That's how all those property boundaries are now. And as you can see, it cuts through several of these existing buildings and then hence the problem. This property has been in a family for nearly 80 years. They've owned all three of these parcels. Um, I don't think over the decades they've really paid close attention as to where these property lines were. So as these buildings were added many, many years ago, they were sort of treated as one big property. Uh, so therefore, we're looking at it as one big plan development, um, but wanting to rearrange these parcels. So no, still keep three parcels of land, but arrange the property line so they do not conflict with buildings, and they do not conflict with driveways and totality, and also to rearrange some of the dwelling units to balance it. Right now, there are nine dwelling units on this property. Um, the northern parcel, which is a few months later, has five. Um, which is a, a duplex in the front, an accessory building in the middle, which is actually sort of a duplex, and then a single dwelling in the back, so there's your five. And then the other two parcels facing Berkwood each have two. Um, the house on the left, which is a two or two Berkwood, is the large, we'll call it the manor house. Um, and then behind that is a single accessory dwelling unit, which is very, very small. Uh, it's only about 300 square feet. And then the property to the right or to the east, which is 204 East Berkwood, has a duplex in the front. What the applicants are proposing, as you see on this drawing, is to take one of the dwelling units from 1501, which is the easternmost building, which is a two-story building, has one unit in it, which is an upstairs unit, and combine that with 204 East Berkwood, um, leave the other properties pretty much as is, except for 1501 Slater, where they would convert the main building, which is a duplex, back into a single family. So as you look at the map now, the distribution is five dwelling units, plus two, plus two, and the proposal is to change it to three, plus two, plus three. In other words, go from nine to eight. Um, in terms of overall density, R10 is 10,000 square feet per lot size, or per unit. Um, this is right at one acre which is 43,560 square feet. You do the math, it comes to four main dwelling units. Under R10 zoning, as a conditional use, you are allowed to request approval for an accessory dwelling unit per main unit. So that's where we're getting the eight from, four main plus four accessory. There's a whole host of deviations, sort of like variances involved with this. Those are outlined in your packet. And some of those pertain to the dwelling unit sizes. Conventionally, with accessory dwelling units, you're limited and how big the uh, accessory dwelling unit can be as a ratio to the main unit, um, and also the height of the building and setbacks and things of that nature. So those are some of the considerations. 
And again, this is not new development. If they were proposing this on vacant land, staff would have a very different take on this. But what they were proposing is to take a non-conforming use pattern of nine dwelling units, reduce it to eight, which reduces the non-conformity, and then rearrange these property lines so that we do not have encroachments from one property onto another in terms of building, or driveways. Driveways would be shared um, and then sort of allocated in a little more balanced way. So the five on one parcel, you have no more than three units on one parcel. Um, lots of details to this. Um, I've got pictures. Um, there are pictures in your pack, but just to sort of run through these sort of quickly. We'll start in sort of a clockwise pattern. And I hope you were able to visit this property um, since the work session or even before. But starting on the Slater Street frontage, this is the existing duplex. And again, they're proposing to convert this back to single family. As we approach the driveway, here's one of their issues. It's a very narrow opening. Um, and that uh, port to share is what they call that. It's sort of a pass-through um, drop-off for the house. It's very close to the property line. Um, they're asking permission to move it even closer to the property line so a modern vehicle can get through that. Um, when that was built a few decades ago, automobiles were smaller than they are now, um, particularly when you look at full-size pickups or SUVs, they will not go through that opening. Um, so they would like at least the possibility, um, although it would be rather expensive, but at least the possibility of widening that um, to make it a little bit more accessible into the rear yard. You see the nature of the driveway, it's the old style, historic type, you know, what I call double car path the driveways. Um, and as you walk back, here's a little close up area. They have a little bit of room before you hit the wall of the rear of the property next door, um, but they're just wanting to add a foot or two there just to give it a little more space. As you pass through that entryway, you look off to your left, this is the rear yard behind that main building. And then around the corner is a porch. One of the things they're wanting to do is enclose this, I think, as a dining room. That's right. For that. Um, this is also in the historic district. And of course, changes to the exterior, changes to the site will require HPC approval. And they are on the agenda for the HPC for next week. And this will be some of the details that HPC will be considering. Um, to the right, as you come up the driveway, this is the back side of 202 East Berkwood. It is the enclosed pool that you see on the site plan. Um, this is what the north wall of the <coughs> is hugging really into the next property. Um, as you go a little further back into the parking area, this is still on 1501 Slater. <coughs> face and face back to Slater Street. You're looking down the driveway from the other direction. You can see the narrowness of the opening. And off to the right, you see some of them actually to the left first. It is the back of the garage to 204 East Workwood, and then the pair of assessor buildings on the rear part of 1501 Slater. The building on the left has two dwelling units. It's like an upstairs, downstairs duplex. There's a connecting carport, and then the building to the right, which has an upstairs dwelling unit. Coming around the corner back out to Berkwood, this is 204 East Berkwood, which is an existing duplex, upstairs, downstairs. This is the driveway that is shared between 204 and 202. They both use it, uh, but the driveway is currently entirely on 204. And they're proposing to shift the property line to come down the middle of this driveway so it becomes truly a shared driveway in terms of ownership. Um, to the right, this is the pair of driveways between 204 and I guess what is 206 East Berkwood. There was a request to vacate an unopened alley, which is right in this picture. It's what we call an alley on paper. Um, tax office shows that it's been vacated many, many years ago. The surveyor could not find record of it actually being vacated. So they went through a city council process at their meeting last week, and the city council has formally vacated and closed this alley. Um, the applicants and their master planning have gone ahead and showed the 10 feet of this alley being on their property. If you look closely in the lower left of this photograph, you see a stake with a pink flag. That is the old property corner of 204 East Berkwood. The driveway is currently to the east of that, which means the driveway was in the alley. Okay, and the property to the east, where the other driveway is, is also in the old alley. 
So physically speaking, the alley was already in use and already split between these two tribes. <coughs> now it's official, but now belong to those two separate lots. So moving up the driveway, this is where it connects into the rear of 1501 Slater, about halfway up. It's sort of like a what I call bowling alley. It looks like you're looking up into the, the rear parking area. If you look immediately to the left, you're looking across the backyard of 204. Um, you see the steps on the back side of that duplex building, and then the, the, the two-car garage on the other side of the backyard. And then back to the other side, now we're standing in the driveway between the houses, looking north at both of their garages, one on one lot, one on the other. And then coming around, this is 202. This is the manor house with its own little driveway on its west side that wraps around back, and then you see the back, uh, sort of like the porch area of the house, the brown structure that's screened in, that's the covered pool, and then straight in the middle is the very small little accessory unit that is between the pool enclosure and the carport. Um, so sort of like a little nested development that's in there. The property surround Berkwood North, even though it's owned R10, much of the development pattern was done years ago when multifamily was allowed, which is how this property got to be how it is. <coughs> the multifamily allowance allowed these other units to go in the backyard. Some of those still exist, but you also have a lot of single family. These are properties on the Slater Street side. They're mostly houses uh, across the street and up the street. But there is one apartment complex a little bit to the north on the west side of Slater. You see that in your area. Some more houses on Slater. And I had to take a picture of these live oak trees more streets of Valdosta would look like this. But this is Slater Street, right out in front of the property. Switching to Berkwood, you don't see the oak trees, but there's a lot of single family homes of varying styles, um, all the way through the Berkwood side, and even the townhouse complex. Again, sort of an introduction of multifamily. It's a little bit of a mixture pattern, uh, which is one reason why the existing development that's on this property still fits in, um, in terms of numbers of dwelling units. But interestingly, from the street, all you see is what appears to be three houses. And you really can't see what's in the backyard. And they're proposing to keep it that way. That's it for the picture show. Um, we talked about this at great, great length um, at the work session. There's some issues about access with driveways needing to be shared. Um, utility connections are still somewhat of a mystery on this property here with water and sewer. Um, Georgia Power raised some concerns when that alley was being closed and vacated. Uh, they wanted to ensure that those rear buildings still would have access uh, for the power lines, which they would. Um, and we just wanted to wrap all of this into the uh, proposed uh, approval with the conditions that you see there in your packet. So we talked about these at work session. It's something we're going to go over in detail. Um, if you like, Mr. Chairman, I can go through them. I can simply entertain questions. Just do the questions on that, okay? Mr. Chair, can I ask? Oh, please, <laughs> please. Ma'am, um, I kept hearing you say encroaching on the other property. I'm assuming you're talking about their properties? Yeah, the encroachment within the three parcels. Okay. They're not encroaching on their neighbors. That's the family okay. encroaching on themselves. Okay. In other words, ignoring the property lines that were internal because that will need to the cost to make it happen. Right. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm looking. You got you got properties that's in the back right there, and I guess right now it's the same situation. Uh, fire exit, you know, fire truck access. They just have to fight it from the street, I guess. Well, well, the driveway on the east side where the old alley used to be is actually wide enough. Okay. And that's why that needs to maintain as okay. a shared drive. Um, because the fire truck is not going to come through that port of share and it's kind of a long ways to run the fire hose. Um, yeah. Because the, the hydrants down at the corner are Berkwood and Slater. Um, so that's how they would get in. And anyone with a larger vehicle is going to need to come through that way as well. Okay, and on the top of your picture here, all curb cuts you see, is that an existing curb cut? Everything that you see on this survey is existing. The only thing that's shifting is the property lines. Um, and they're wanting, to, and you know, they're going to fully renovate the houses. Um, the main building on 1501 Slater will become a single family residence instead of the duplex. Let all the other dwelling units stay as is, just get renovated in a historically proper way. Also, acknowledging these buildings are built in different decades, but all of them 
Yes, that's in the proposed deviation list to allow that setback that's already small. I think it's about four, four and a half feet to go as low as zero. There's no structures to the south of it. Um, but also subject to HPC approval to allow that physical change on the outside. But yes, it is, that is part so of the there are no structures on this. This corner lot has structures, but there's none up by the property line. It's just there's a wall that's going to be sort of privacy wall that is pretty well covered <laughs> with vines and other vegetation. <laughs> Expiration date, mission yeah. number six. Development of covenants and the property owners association that one of these parcels could be sold with no provision for shared driveways and maintenance of shared carports and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the whole thing needs to stay wrapped as one um, in terms of the sharing of the access, <coughs> sharing of utilities, um, and those types of features being put into the needs for the property. Um, the whole purpose is to be subdivided into three parcels so they could be sold individually, but they need to come with a few little rules attached um, just to maintain that, you know, so they don't cut off access, they don't cut off utilities. But I guess what I'm saying is, is the way I'm reading this, <coughs> we could have a change in property line to be re subdivided. A parcel sold before the protected covenants and the homeowner association is Okay. Um, so is there, is there a good sense in making that a shorter? Well, I think they need to be the same. Um, it should go with the plat. And it's the replanting of this property that's triggering the whole process. Um, and some of these things, in terms of the cross access easements, the things that we can accomplish on the plat itself. Which I think is easier to do. Um, I'm comfortable with staying the same. The two year time frame is really to allow them more than sufficient time to do the renovation. I know with a renovation project of this magnitude, they're probably going to find a few things they had not counted on, or a few things they might want to add in their covenants, um, special features about the property. Um, so they want to tie their hands in that regard. Yeah. Allowed by 
um, this property is going to be expanded, or is, is this is what we are seeing? It incorporates existing and potential property as well. What you see is all existing; it's just not all paved. Um, for example, the Brookwood properties, what's going to be paved driveway, sort of ringing around the 202 Brookwood, the main house. There is a gravel area behind the building of 204, which sort of is the linkage up to their garage. There's more than enough room there, currently in use for tenants of that duplex. Uh, 1501 Slater is where it gets a little more complicated. There's only parking and maneuvering area of any size, and then that rear portion in front of that easternmost accessory building, which is pro proposed to become part of 204 Berkeley. I think as long as the area is maintained as a shared feature, that works. Um, otherwise, you've got three dwelling units on 1501 Slater that don't have a lot of room for parking. Or turning around. So, I suppose my concern would be, you know, if we have an the number of residential units that are now permitted on this EUG, um, what is the parking limit okay. on this, which I, don't, I didn't see in here. There's no parking standard. We're not calling this multifamily. We're still calling it single family with accessory dwellings. Okay. There's no parking lot, parking space requirement, um, but it's still based on common sense when you know, apply a plan development. Um, the way we're looking at it is right now you have this existing parking facilities with nine units. They're proposing to basically keep these parking facilities but reduce it to eight units. So whatever the situation is now, it should get better. Um, but we still want to make sure that the access is shared so people can park where there's room and maneuver where there is room to do that, which is how it is now. driveway for a house and count that as same as two parking spaces you know, to accommodate the dwelling unit. And we've got you know, four driveways so the, plus rear yard parking areas, which is more than enough really total to accommodate. So the duplex that's on Brookwood, the 204, where, where their parking right now is shared. They have a parking garage. They have a garage and then you see a gravel area denoted as the backyard. Mm -hmm. Sort of a semi rough gravel packed in, right. semi pervious parking area. And it's in the pictures too. What's a little confusing to me, and you haven't seen the property also, the parking for that duplex is now behind the, the main one story residence. Or, or at least the way it's shown in the, in the <coughs> survey. Okay, you're looking at 204 Brookwood? 204, the two-story... Block residence, which is a duplex. Correct. So that's a duplex. Where, in this proposed plan, where is the parking for that? That where building? Correct. Right. Same place where it is now, which is the gravel area behind, as well as that two-car garage, okay. like you see in the picture. That's all proposed to stay with 204 Brookwood. So where, why, did, why does that parcel need to have a shared driveway with the 202? If their parking is in the back of the building, what, what is the purpose of having a shared driveway between 202 and 204? Uh, the driveway that's between 202 and 204 is shown in this picture, and the driveway accesses both garages. In this other words, is in the back. That's right. towards the back. This is looking for the back, not that they have to use the driveway, but if you come straight up the driveway, you get straight into that garage, which is on 204. And it links into that gravel parking area. Right now, that driveway is entirely on the 204 parcel, mm -hmm. but it is needed by 202. But there is also another driveway on the 204 parcel, which goes all the way to the back. The Correct, and street. then into the side. I mean, there's very right. good circulation right. on these parcels. But they wanted to put the property line down the center of this driveway between those two buildings, so it's truly shared and it's true half-owned by each. Because it's conveniently used by both of these garages.
I mean, we could isolate it parcel to parcel. It's just it's not being used that way now, and I don't see a good reason to require that. At least in terms of easement now, if they want to you know, add some walls or gates or things like that, I think that could be done. But at least for planting purposes, have the ability to have cross access. You know, as far as adding gates and things, that's a physical feature that would be addressed at a future HPC process, a planning review process where the fire department gets the way in. I just don't want to tie their hands at this point. Historical purposes of the things that he did by us, and part of that would be to help preserve properties that were in his family and the reason to for him and his brother and stuff. So that's just kind of part of the situation there. And while we really wanted to return 1601 back to the same family, and of course, they're, they're, uh, the house in question, the one that you were speaking of, the 1937 house, was. Uh, this was the main family residence, all of which. This was, this was his sister's his brother-in-law's house uh who's also a musician and everybody back here about us so we're just trying to help preserve the neighborhood and improve the situation over the <coughs> years and since the 70s there's been a trend that kind of pushed towards one family and here in the last couple years we've been a part of pushing back towards the family and that's kind of our intent is to help push back that way uh raise property values Commissioners, any questions for presenter? Just curious, how, how many are presently being occupied in the night? Just, just, just was that the main dwelling? That is, that's just. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here this evening wishing to oppose this request? Please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to oppose this request, please come forward. If there is none available or none that wish to stand up, commissioners, you have any further discussion amongst ourselves and our two staff concerning this request? If there is no further discussion and no questions, at this time we will take a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> in the past when we look at the property that has an historical value sometimes we shift from historical to hysterical in my opinion sometimes but in this particular case the properties look very good they are uh, properties that 
that I had to the community with the turbines and not even that. Um, so I think it's a, it's a good piece of property that they're trying to make the best of with what they have. And uh, so I'd like to make a recommendation. We file our staff's request for approval. And unless you want me to do it, I'm going to say add all six of the conditions. Otherwise, I'll read them. I think they're in print. We'll be okay. <laughs> so. I guess that we have a motion, and we have from Commissioner Willis a second from Commissioner Folsom. Any discussion on that?